Hi everyone and welcome back to this action RPG series. In the first episode we wrapped up our character's movement and we got them rooted so they can move around, get rooted and follow the mouse. In this episode we're going to work on our interaction system. So the left click on the mouse button is a context sensitive button. So it changes what it does when we click on different things. So in this episode we're going to start off with looking at the interaction. So walking over to a chest and then triggering something on that chest to happen. So let's get started. So welcome back. I have imported in a Paragon asset. I've got imported Paragon Greystone as I wanted some sort of hack and slash sort of character that I can use for this demonstration. So I brought him in and he comes with all these animations and all these skins and everything else you want to use. Um, it also comes with animation blueprint, which is ha super handy, saves you a lot of work. And here's the, the player character, but we're not going to worry about using him. We can just use our one that we currently already got. So to do that, we're going to go into our top down folder. And on our top down character, we're going to go in here, go to the viewport and change the mesh over to our greystone mesh. So let's find him, put him in there. Okay, there he is. And we want to change his anim class here to use greystone. So let's go greystone. And there he is. Okay, in all his glory. Save that. Now one thing you'll note with greystone when you push play is he does this starting sort of pose when he gets up. If you want to take that out, I'm going to show you how to do it in a second. But here we're just going to look around and look at his movement to see how it looks and moves. Um, so his rotation is very sharp, but it's looking okay. Now, if I'm standing still, we can see that he's running on the spot, which looks a bit odd. He should be turning on the spot, yeah? But other than that, not too bad, okay? So let's take a look at how we can fix a couple of these things. So I go to the animation blueprint of Greystone. We're going to go into characters, heroes, Greystone, and go to the Greystone animation blueprint. Now, let's first of all take off that intro that you're seeing. So if we go to the event graph, and to remove that, we just go up to top here and you see begin play, montage play. You just don't have that. Okay, and you won't do that weird getting up thing that he does at start. The second issue was him standing still and yet still wanting to move. So why was that happening? Well, let's take a look at our conditions for movement. If we go back into the animation graph here, look at ground locomotion. So we've got idle, which is what we want him to be, but it's going to jog start for some reason and end the run. So what is the condition here? Okay, so the condition into the jog is if speed is greater than zero and isn't air is not true and we are accelerating. Okay. Um, the condition for going into run is when this has finished its animation and it will stay in running until is accelerating is not true. Okay, so is accelerating is an issue there. And we need to figure out how to stop that from doing that. So let's go back to the event graph and look at how is accelerating is calculated. So if we look around here, we can see here, we can get the current acceleration, vector length, and if it's greater than zero, is accelerating is set to true or false. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to right click on vector length here and I'm going to right click on the pin, sorry, and watch this value. This come up with a little, little window here and I can play the game and I will see this value change in real time. So if I just move this to the side here, I'll try and show all of this at the same time. Usually I have this on two monitors, so a little bit easier to do. Okay, uh, sometimes it doesn't update straight away. What you have to do is just go into the top here Preview is to choose the Greystone Anim Blueprint. And there you go. You can see it now with doing its thing. So there's the value changing when I'm moving. It gets set to zero. Hold down Shift and left click. You can see the value has been set to a thousand. Okay. But if I'm moving, I hold down Shift. That thousand doesn't ever leave. Okay. Because it's still stuck in that run. That run doesn't end. Okay. So if I was starting with zero, it doesn't matter if it goes to a thousand because the other options aren't coming up. The speed isn't happening. But if I'm running around and I change acceleration here, that happens. Okay, so we've got two things. We've got acceleration and speed. So what I'm going to do is go back to my locomotion here. And we're going to change or edit the condition for running to go to jog stop. And this is accelerating is not true. And speed 
get speed is less than and I'm not going to do exactly zero I'm going to put in a little bit higher than that because acceleration and speed are going to be a little bit different so I'm going to change speed here to be I don't know 60 and this would be a and boolean Uh, sorry, or, not and. Sorry, or. Or. In there. Okay, so either could be true for this to happen. So let's take a look at that in game now. So run around like normal, hold down shift. And we've got him kind of, but he's now, got, you see he'll stop. But he's stuck in a loop where he's stopping and going back into the run start. So he's doing this loop continuously so it's going round here jog start run jog stop and then back to jog start so jog stop has two outputs one going to idle one going to jog start idle's condition is automatic if this has finished the animation it'll go there however this one is set to is accelerating is true it will run to there well we've already said we don't want it to happen unless speed has been changed so i'm going to go back to this transition here and add speed to it and that'd be an and no this time. And now its speed is greater than zero. So if he's moving and accelerating, he goes up. Okay. So right round, hold down shift. Now staying still, looking at where I want to look. Let go of shift and off he runs. Like so. So as we've got our character set up now, we are going to talk a bit about more about the left click. Now, in the first episode, I did go through the importance of the left click being a contextual button. So if I click on the floor, we'll walk over to the floor. But if I click on like a chest, they'll walk over to the chest, but they'll also do something else. They'll attack it, open it, whatever it may be. So if we click on an enemy, if we click on an enemy, they'll walk over to it and attack it. Okay, it has to know what you want to do with it. So what we're going to do is set up an interface to handle these special clicks. And we're going to go ahead in our contract drawer and set that up. So I'm going to create a new folder here for systems. And I'm going to create in a blueprint interface. And we're going to call this one the interaction interface. Okay. Right. So on this one, we need to set the target on the character who they're currently facing towards. So we can do set interact target. Okay. Compile that and save that. That's the first thing. And that's going to help us communicate from objects back to the player character. And on the player character, once they've got that, we're going to then check what range they're in. Okay, so when we interact target, we need to know what we want to do with that. So if it's a chest, for example, we need to output the range of uh, just interaction, which is pretty standard for all our characters. But if we click on an enemy, when we see interact target for an enemy, we actually want to set the, the movement range based upon the range of the attack that we want to do with it. So how can we do that? Well, we can do a, very, a few things. We can do on here, add. And we can get attack range. And that's going to be used to return the range of the attack that has been assigned to the left click. So we're going to go down to the outputs and create a float on this. And then we'll do range. Hit compile and save that. Right, so now let's apply this. Let's go to our player character. Go to the class settings. And on the interfaces, we're going to add our interaction interface. And if I go to my interfaces here, we can see get attack range and set interact target. I'm just going to set the attack range here to a default value of, say, 150. Okay, so a melee based sort of range. But obviously, this can be based upon our abilities when we get around to them and get in the range of each ability. So that's the first thing. Next is the set interact target. So when we get to interact target, we need to know who is calling that. So on here, we're now going to need, well, first of all, we need to get hold of which act we've clicked on. So if we double click on our set interact target, we can go to our node here and on inputs, we can have the 
actor. That'd be just an actor reference. Nothing special. I'll save that, close that, and it should appear. If it doesn't appear, just compile, right click or refresh the node and it'll appear like that. So next I need to promote that to a variable. I need to promote to variable and that'd be current interact target. And that's that. We then want to work out which, uh, what, how far away we are from our current target. If we're close enough to interact with it and do something. So we're going to right click on here and do a tick event. And you can do a tick or a timer, up to you, but we'll do a tick. Uh, it's, it's a very cheap method we're about to do now because we're all doing it as basically a distance check. So we're going to get our current target. Distance 2. Other actor is self, and that returns this value here. And this will be based upon the interaction range of our target we click on. So if our target is an enemy, for example, that range is going to be based upon the attack. If it's something else, it's going to be based upon the interaction. So let's just focus on interaction. We'll co attack combat later. So we're going to take this return value, and if this is uh, less than or equal to, uh, let's say 150, that's when we want to say interact with the target. Okay, so we put that into a branch and we're going to take out our current interact target and we want to call an interface on here saying interact with. So let's go back to our interfaces and add a new function and do this one as interact with. Okay, and hit compile on that. So I'm going to take your current interaction target, drag out and do interact with. Now you may need it to pass through a couple of information like who is interacting with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that to my inputs of interact with. I'll go in there and go uh, character. And this would be just a character reference. You could do your character if you want, but we'll keep it pretty uh, standard and clean. I set it to a character. So now I can feed it a character pin, which will be self. And that's it. So next thing I need to do is just set up the chest uh, that I want to test this with. So let's create a new actor. And this will be chest. Open this up. And we're going to give this thing the interact interface. So interact interface. Now, when we click on this one, we want it to set to the player that we've clicked on it. So we're going to go, for, well, first of all, let's add a box to it so we can actually click on it. And we're going to go to the event graph and add the on clicked and the actor on clicked. This will only work if the top down controller or controller you're using has enabled click events. You find that in the controller. On the right hand side default panel, you'll see in here enable click events. Make sure that's turned on. It's off by default. So that will make this event work. So then we want to get our player character. And from there, we're going to do set interact target message. And the message can be sent over to the player character with this actor reference, which will be self. So that's going to be called. And then the character here will call this set interact target, which gets set to current interact target. And the tick is doing this check now to work out the distance between the current interact target where it's 150, and if it is, it will interact with. And on the chest, we'll just make our character jump. So we can go to interact with, double click on that, and character here, we'll turn to jump. We don't have any animations or inventory stuff to write about just yet, so jumping will do just fine. So we'll do that, and then we want to tell our character to forget about who the current interact target is. So after interact with, we're going to drag out current interact target and leave it blank. And then at the start of the tick as well, we want to only do this if the current interact target here is valid. So let's right click on this, convert the validated get, plug that in. And now we'll only do the tick stuff if it actually has a target. Okay. So compile, save that. So let's place my chest now in the level. There we go. And if I walk over to it and hit on it, my character will walk over to it. And they reach it, but it didn't jump. So let's take a look at why it didn't jump. 
So debug this. I'm going to go into my cat, uh, my chest actually, and decide whether or not this is actually getting called. So whether it's a jumping problem or a chest problem. So I'm going to add a breakpoint to my jump. Go over to it, and nothing happens. Nothing. The breakpoint doesn't fire. So the issue is not here. Let's take off that breakpoint. Go back to my top-down character. Now the only thing that's stopping the interact with is this branch here. And the condition for that is get distance to is less than 150. So let's increase that. Let's go to 300. And now, I'll click on it. Let's jump. Like that. Okay. And one thing we may also want to do is have to stop moving when we reach that range there. So let's go back to my character. And on this interact with, when we do all this, we're going to tell our character here, you know, character movement, to stop moving immediately. Okay, so around like that. All good. And there we have it. We've got our chest interaction working and in the game. Uh, obviously, we don't have inventory yet set up, so we can't do anything to do with inventory just yet, but that'll come down the line later. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to try and get a head start, and using my personal inventory system series that I've released recently, you can check that out over on the channel at youtube.com forward slash Ryan Laley. If you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, and you get all access to my videos before anyone else from just $1 a month. Thank you to all my Patreon members and the continued support from YouTube members as well. And I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.